so much. Hello, Cleveland. Hello, Ohio. Thank you so much. Thank you all so very much. I I am very excited to be back here in Cleveland. I um, I especially am thrilled to be in the district of Congresswoman Marsha Fudge. And into the city of Mayor Frank Jackson. And to have the county executive here, County Executive Armand Vyadish, where are you? And my great friend of so many years, Congressman Tim Ryan. I am also pleased to be here with all of you uh, to have this opportunity to talk about the campaign and the fact that this will be a busy week here in Ohio. We are so excited to have the campaign building across this state. And this campaign is about building a future where every American can live up to his or her full potential, no matter where you come from, what you look like, or who you love. Now, I believe this with all my heart because it's the only way for America to live up to its full potential if every American has the chance to live up to his or hers. Now, I know we have a long way to go. In fact, the future that I envision is going to take work from all of us because I want to knock down every barrier that stands in the way. I want to knock down the economic barriers, the health care barriers, the education barriers, the kind of challenges that people face every day. Now, you're here tonight and you're going to do everything you can in this next week, along with people in Florida, Illinois, Missouri, North Carolina, who are going to the polls. I hope you make your voice and your vote count too. This has been this has been so far a campaign focused on the issues. And I'm proud of the campaign that Senator Sanders and I are running. We have our differences, which you can see when we debate, but I'll tell you what, those differences pale in comparison to what's happening on the Republican side. Every time you think it can't get any uglier, they find a way. And as the rhetoric keeps sinking lower, the stakes in this election keep rising higher. Now, running for president shouldn't be about delivering insults. It should be about delivering results for the American people. That's what I'm doing in this campaign, and that's what I will do all the way through it, because I want to talk about what working families are up against across the country. I want to talk about how we have a new bargain so you can get ahead and stay ahead. In every, in every industrial city, small town, farm country, Indian country, every community, that's been hollowed out by lost jobs and lost hopes. Don't let anybody tell you we can't make it in America anymore. We can, we are, and we will. But in order to do that, we can't be talking about building walls or 
turning the clock back, we have to build on what made America great in the first place, our energy and optimism, our openness and creativity. Nobody works harder than Americans. Nobody innovates better. Nobody dreams bigger. And if we work together, I know America will outcompete anybody anywhere in the world and create create a future that will hold out the promise of America to every kid with a dream, every aspiring entrepreneur, everyone who works hard and does their part should be able to say, I can make it in America. But to get there, my friends, we do need a real strategy. We have to invest in core American strengths. You know, I voted for the rescue funds that saved America's auto industry when it was on the brink. And as president, I'll always stand by our auto workers and automakers, but I'll also invest in manufacturing and small business and clean energy. I've set some big goals. I want us to install a half a billion more solar panels, and then enough clean energy to power every home in America, all within the next 10 years. And let's start creating more good jobs that can't be outsourced by repairing, by repairing our failing infrastructure, including all the dangerous water pipes, not only under Flint, Michigan, but under a lot of American cities. You know, Jackson, Mississippi has a lead problem. So does Cleveland, Ohio. More than 14% of Cleveland's kids have been exposed because of lead in paint. So we have problems in the paint, in the soil, in the water. And I want to stand right here in Cleveland and tell you, as your president, if I'm so fortunate enough to be in that office next year, we're going to tackle this lead problem everywhere our children are at risk. And we're going to stand up to corporations that seem to have absolutely no loyalty to this country that gave them so much in the first place. Look at Nabisco, laying off 600 workers in Chicago, moving a production line out of the country, even though the company has long received tax breaks from the state of Illinois. Now, they have no problem taking taxpayer dollars with one hand and giving out pink slips with the other. Look at the Eaton Corporation here in Ohio. They get millions of dollars in tax credits and government contracts to make electrical equipment. But that hasn't stopped them from using accounting tricks to move their headquarters overseas and avoid paying their fair share of taxes here at home. Now they're shutting down a factory in Berea, eliminating more than 100 jobs, moving that work out of the country. And to top it off, they gave their CEO a payout worth more than $11 million. Now, we should make corporations pay for these so-called inversions with a new exit tax. I want companies to know if they walk out on America, they're going to pay a price. And if they ship jobs overseas, we're going to make them give back the tax breaks they receive here at home. Because we can take that money and we can put it to work investing in communities that are left behind and bring those jobs back to America. Now, there should be no doubt if you cheat your employees, exploit your customers, pollute our environment, or rip off the taxpayers, we will hold you accountable. But 
When businesses do the right thing, we will stand with them. We will reward insuring, innovation, investment, and sharing profits with workers, not just shareholders and top managers. You know, it's good for everyone when companies treat workers like assets to be invested in, not costs to be cut. It's simple economics. America grows when your paycheck grows. And I know, I know the idea of corporate patriotism might sound quaint in an era of vast multinationals, but that's exactly what we need because we really are all in this together. So we need to work together to break down all the barriers holding back our families and our country. And don't you think we've waited long enough for quality, affordable child care and paid family leave? And don't you think it's time for equal pay for equal work for women? I sure do. And let's break down the barriers that stop our children from getting the quality public education they need and deserve. Every child should have a good school and a great teacher no matter what zip code they're from. And let's break down the barriers so that all our students can graduate from college debt-free. And people already burdened by debt can pay it off as a fair percentage of their income with a definite end date. So you finish your obligations. And let's invest in our historically black colleges and universities, which play such a vital role across our country. So we have to break down all the barriers, and those include ones that are still rooted in bigotry, in bias, in prejudice. The truth is, more than half a century after a Rosa Parks sat and Dr. King marched and John Lewis bled. We know race still plays a significant role in determining who gets ahead in America and who gets left behind. And we know that there are problems we have to be honest and face. You know, when the young man, Tamir Rice, was shot, that was painful for everybody. Yes, well, there are a lot of names we could be reciting, not just from here, but from across our country. So I believe we have to invest in every community. We have to help everybody succeed, because that will be good for all of us. You know, You know, Ohio's been very important in our history. You've given us a lot of trailblazers right here from Cleveland, and one or two that I knew and really cherished were Lou Stokes and the late, great Stephanie Tubbs Jones. People who were successful, people who really did so much for this community and for this state and indeed for our country. And I am proud that they were my friends. And I am proud that we have leaders like the ones I mentioned earlier who are helping us move into the future. But here's what I want you to know. When you run for an office like this, it's a leap of faith. And what's important is we've got to focus on how we bring our country back together. You know, the divisiveness, the mean-spiritedness, that's not going to move us forward. We need